New Orleans, Louisiana, the CGA Pete Housing Development, a.k.a. the Wild Mac Noya. It's the early 90s that 11.5 is bumping in the city. Between the hours of 6 a.m. and 7 a.m., Vicks would line up like the food stamp office. Hustlers would bag up 20K a day of their dog food. The constant flow of customers would continue until the work was all gone. The Dooney Boys, a known clique of young hitters, out the Noya, put together by Anthony Joseph, a.k.a. Dooney, would be pumping at the time. Another big dog and known lieutenant would be Miss Paula's son, Kareem Smith, a.k.a. Skit, a.k.a. Skit Boo. An unwritten law that was put in place by Dougaloo was if you claim to know you, you need an address. Skit Boo grew up in a Tyladonna court, 2626 Tyladonna. Coming up on the old side, where it was more laid back, Skit would eventually migrate to the new side of the Noya at the age of 15. The new side was much wilder and faster than the old side. Papa, a.k.a. Le Papa, would introduce Skibu to the new side. An unfortunate turn of events would lead to Papa being shot in the eye by Rockhead Bambi. If you know, you know. Skibu was already off the porch, but would really be in the streets once he hit the new side. Red, Dougaloo, Prissy Corey, and Law would be Skid's crew. Skit would eventually start rocking with Byron, a.k.a. Busy, Lele, Claudie B, Ron Moosh, who kept that Mac 11 on his lap, in his wheelchair, and Eric Maurice. Willow Street has been known for gangsters ever since OG Roy Lee. Six Court for show, the circle was notoriously known as that road for all the grimy shit that went down. Skibu would link up with Dooney in 93. Their relationship would grow tighter after Dooney's release in 99. After Phil promises from big timers out to 17, Skit, Dooney, and Richard Porter, aka WAP, would put their money together and go on a 90 day run. WAP, Dooney, Skit Boo, those three hooked up. So they took over the project. Well, let me say this, not took over the project. I don't want nobody to get them. So what you mean, took They um, took, took over what we left off on our side. From there, they would be on their feet, bringing in 10 to 15 racks a day, which would eventually turn into 20 racks, sometimes 40 racks a day. Skit would take it upon himself to be in the lab, bagging up. One morning, the tables would turn. With the DBs out of work, Skaboo and Dooney both ducked off in hotels. The Dooney boys would blow up their phones asking for work. At this point, Skit had grown tired and stopped bagging up for the DBs. He would pick up some work from Kiki and drop it off to the Dooney Boys. Lil Calvin would plead with Skit to bag up his work. Skaboo would look out for him, letting Calvin know this would be his last time bagging up. As Skit would head to the lab, he would hear someone from downstairs. Uh oh! Sergeant, them boys down here. 30 minutes later, there will be a knock at the door of the lab. The knock will go ignored. An hour later, the door will be kicked in by Sarge and his band of 30 cops. If you don't know who Sarge is, he's a dirty cop on the New Orleans Police Department who was known for putting fake charges on dudes, planting dope on dudes, and setting dudes up. Shout out to Slim, who would mention Sarge in his song, Cheese Eaters. Look your rounds, this one years for all of y'all. Sarge in this task force, bitch boy. Prepare for these types of situations, Skit and his crew would get rid of the work. Pissed that he couldn't make a bus, and Skit would not talk, Sarge would plant a quarter of raw in the apartment. Skit would be charged with the crime and sentenced to 12 years. 
rumors were circulating that Skibu got popped at the airport with a brick and all kind of other stories that weren't true. Two weeks after the arrest of Skit, Dooney's life would be taken. It is alleged that the crime was committed by one of the young hitters out the know you. This will leave the Dooney Boys without a connect. Johnny Davis, aka Tent War Fat, was slide into position. Fat was known for slinging that iron and batting up anyone that owed him with the blicky. The Dooney Boys run would be a short eight or nine months. Skibu, one of the more level-headed and intelligent dudes without the know you, would pen two books while he was incarcerated. Chain Reaction, Skit's first book, which is a story of love, lust, confusion, and betrayal. Skit, who now goes by the name Skibu the author, second book, would be Chain Reaction 2, a must read that reviewers say is impossible to put down. You can find the links to both of Skit's book pinned in the comment section. Now a successful author and no longer in the streets, Skaboo has moved on to more positive outlooks on life. This is a feel good story for the books. Maybe one day Skit will pin a book on his life in the streets and how he made it out the game alive. Since being released, Skit has done several interviews on social media platforms.